The Schwab US Dividend Equity TF or SCHD has quickly become one of my favorite long-term buy and hold forever dividend growth ETFs. So much so to the point to where as of right now filming this video in my long-term dividend tracker, it shows that I currently own around 525 shares of SCHD across all my portfolios. Now in this video, we're gonna break down a great analysis of the SCHD methodology, explain exactly how this ETF works, which is very, very important for every single SCHD holder to know. Now, especially if you are like myself, which either own quite a bit of SCHD or plan it in the future, make sure to stick around throughout this entire video because you are not going to want to miss a thing. I just finished my brand new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from zero to now over seven figures invested and also on how I earn more than $6,000 per month in dividends. I also finished my custom dividend tracker that you can use to track your dividend income progress on an ongoing basis. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today. It's the first link in my description. So I came across this awesome breakdown of SCHD's methodology on, on the r slash dividends reddit community and i knew that i had to make a video about this and share with everyone because this breakdown is very very insightful now before we go over this breakdown and explain what SCHD's methodology is and explain exactly how this etf works again i repeat this is very very important if you do plan on holding on to SCHD and even possibly making it a large portion of your overall portfolio it's really important to understand what you own and of course how the asset works so first off, it says, what does SCHD screen for? It then says, I'm going to regularly cite information from the Dow Jones Dividend 100 Index Pages Methodology PDF, which of course you can find on spglobal.com. Now, the reason being is, as you can see right here, the SCHD TF tracks before fees and expenses, the total return of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index. So when digging into SCHD, it's important to dig a little bit deeper into that index. It says the index universe is defined as constituents of the Dow Jones US Broad Market Index, excluding REITs. So within SCHD TF, you are never going to see REITs, real estate investment trusts. So if that's something that you want large exposure to, you're definitely not going to find it here. Now for stocks to enter or exit the index that SCHD tracks, these are going to be the following screens. It says minimum of 10 consecutive years of dividend payments, which is very important, especially for any dividend investor out there. When you are qualifying, if you want to buy a dividend stock or ETF, you of course should not only look at things like dividend yield, dividend payments for consecutive years, or even price performance. In my opinion, you should use all those things to paint a picture of if or if not, it's going to be a potential good investment. But within the index that SEG tracks, that is one of the main screenings. The stock needs to have at least 10 years of dividend payments which that means historically speaking, there shouldn't be any dividend cuts unless something crazy happens because 10 years is quite a run. Next, minimum float adjusted market capitalization of US 500 million. So also very important to make it into the bunch, the stock needs to have a minimum of 500 million market capitalization. Next is a minimum three month ADVT of US 2 million. They then said step one is hard to pass with about 92.6% failing, which is again why I love that being one of the screenings. There's lots of different stocks out there that can make it with 10 years, three years, two years, or one year of consecutive years dividend payments. But the majority of stocks do not even make it past step one. Now, step number two is very easy and exists to filter out about 20% of US companies. And step three requires three months long plus average daily volume trading greater than $2 million per day. And step four is very easy to filter out 20% of US companies. Combined universe is slightly larger than 300 companies. These three filters produce an interesting universe full of great companies. But how does the universe get refined from 300 to 100 seller ones? Now, the way that this works is math. Eligible securities are ranked by each four fundamental base characteristics, free cash flow to total debt, annual net cash flow from operating activities divided by total debt. Companies with zero total debt are ranked first. So the companies that make it through the first screenings now have to go through a rigorous formula. And this is it right here. It also says return on equity, annual net income divided by total shareholders equity, IAD yield, five-year dividend growth rate defined as the formula right here. It then says the top 100 ranked stocks by the composite score are, are selected to the index, subject to the following buffer rules that favor current constituents during the annual review. Now, just a side note, if I didn't make it clear already, this is an annual thing. So also why it's so important to understand how this all works is you are going to have exposure to say X, Y, and Z company one year, and maybe the next year things could completely change. Now, the constituent stocks will remain in the index as long as they are among the top 200 rankings by the composite score. Non-constituent stocks are added to the index based on their rankings until the constituent count reaches 100. If two non-constituents have the same composite score, the non-constituent with the higher dividend yield will be selected. So basically, it's a method to slightly reduce volatility. 
Once a stock gets in the index, it gets a slight break when being evaluated in score. Now, as far as constituent weightings, this is also important. Stocks in the index are weighted quarterly based on the capped market capitalization weighted approach. No single stock can represent more than 4% of the index, and no single global industry classification standard sector can be represented more than 25% of the index, as measured at the time of index construction, annual rebalancing, and quarterly updates. So as you can see at this point, it's pretty clear. There is a rigorous method on how stocks become a part of the index, which I can't speak for everyone, but for me personally, because this process is so rigorous that that alone earns SCG the expense ratio of 0.06% gladly. Now, lastly, it says in review of the constituent companies SCHD. Number one, belong to an elite universe of companies. My screener shows 302 are eligible out of 4348 possible. Number two, gets ranked in a vicious manner, emphasizing high free cash flow, low debt, excellent return on equity, high dividends, and a track of dividend growth. Number three, the top 100 ranked tickers win. No single ticker, not single sector is permitted to dominate the fund. The potential for excess winning is rigorously enforced. Now, for example, as of right now, at least after all those screens, this is the top 100 stocks that are in the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF as of right now. The top holdings being things like Broadcom, AbbVie, Merrick, Amgen, Home Depot, Verizon, Texas Instrument, Cisco, Chevron, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, UPS, Pfizer, BlackRock, etc., etc., etc. So now that you understand the entire methodology and exactly how companies are added or of course taken out of the underlying index that SEG tracks, it definitely allows me to sleep pretty well at night knowing how rigorous the screen is and it allows me to sleep well at night knowing that these companies within the CTF had to jump through quite a few hoops to make it into the party. And to be honest, this specific stock screening method is obviously doing something right. SHD is up almost 200% as far as the next time frame, has been paying dividends every single quarter since the ETF's inception. And if you look at SHD's dividend growth, it's been very, very impressive. Now, I know there's other ETFs across the market that also offer really high quality methodologies and high quality screenings for stocks to enter or exit the underlying index. But that being said, for exactly what SHD offers for me specifically as a long-term dividend investor, that favors not only dividends, but also growth and, of course, dividend growth. Dividend growth is very, very important to me. The Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, or SHG, is my number one favorite buy and hold forever position as of right now and will likely be for years to come. But now that we went over the entire SHG methodology, we talked about why it's my favorite. I want to hear from you guys down below. Are you currently holding any shares of SHG across your long-term portfolio? And if so, how many shares do you have as of right now? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like in it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.